Welcome back everybody, my name is Tim, this is another Real Ideal Gear Review, and today we're looking at the third installment of the Casio Icon series. These are the three watches that are identified with Casio and they're just inseparable with the name. And we have the F91W, which is by popularity, by just pure sales, is the most popular Casio watch internationally. And then we have the watch that really kind of set Casio out there, I think, in a way that was unforgettable. That was the CA53, the calculator watch. And it was later updated in, in several different models to include the data bank, but that original first CA53 that was made its debut in Back to the Future um, really solidified itself as just kind of this unique watch that Casio would put together this technology alongside a watch, which was the calculator. So those are the two first icons of Casio. Today we're looking at the third icon, which is the G-Shock and specifically the 5600 or the updated 5610U model. Now those two models have been around forever, since 19, the late 1980s. They have made their place known in Hollywood, among celebrities, sports figures, astronauts. All kinds of figures have worn the square in all kinds of different situations. My personal experience with the square has really seen it with military guys and law enforcement. I also use it myself for my lawn business, my lawn maintenance business, because it is just tough as nails. So we're going to take a look at this watch and just kind of look at why is this watch probably the most recognizable icon of all the Casio watches out there. So let's take a look. The Casio G-Shock is just a quintessential watch for most watch collectors in their collections. You've got to have a Casio G-Shock. And for most people, I think the Square really is the watch to get for a collection for a at least a starter a Casio. This watch just has so much history behind it. It also has really some real high level practicality uh, for wearing it and for just using it every day. Not one of those safe queens that maybe some other watches in a collection may become. This watch really begs itself to be used. And I honestly, this is one of the watches I was kind of reluctant to get because I'm not a huge G-Shock square fan until I bought one and then I realized you know this watch actually has so many things about it that really work well for my job and just the history behind it it's just undeniable so let's kind of go through some of the information around the G-Shock and take a look at this watch real quickly we're not going to go through an uh, in-depth uh, history you want that go to other, other YouTube channels it's out there I'm not going to get into that but we're going to get into just kind of the why is this one of the icons one of the three icons of Casio so first of all, what is a G-Shock? G-Shock is a watch that can stand withstand a 10 meter drop, 100 meters of water resistance, and has at least a 10 year battery. So those three things really qualify this watch to be one of those watches that can really go anywhere and do anything. We, we say that in a lot of different settings, whether it's the EDC world, whether it's the watch world, or just kind of that practical use. Like, can you grab this watch and just go with it? Absolutely. So the G-Shock really has that, that, that pedigree built into it. It was introduced in 1987 as the DW5600. So the 5600 had the flash alert, it had the 10-year battery, it was not a tough solar, and it did not have atomic timekeeping. Those are the major differences between this version and the 5600. The 5610 obviously has a tough solar, has the atomic timekeeping, has an automatic light on here. Some other nice things about this, and the 5610U is actually updated from the other 5610 uh, with a few other things too. So, But anyway, the differences between these watches have, have been relatively just module-based. The shape and design of the case has remained largely the same and I have to say that one of the things about this watch that is really appealing is just the way that this watch wears on the wrist it's a very very comfortable watch to wear and of all the G-Shocks this is probably the most wearable G-Shock that's out there because of its size it fits well on any kind of above average all the way down to a small wrist if you have one of the larger wrists out there this may not be the right proportion for your wrist although a number of people do, a number of guys wear watches like that. So when you see a watch like this on the wrist, it just really does, it has a nice proportion to it. It fits really well. And also, one of the things I like about this G-Shock that makes it wearable, and I think people really enjoy this G-Shock in particular, is the lower profile. This G-Shock and the Casio, the uh, 2100, the, these two watches really have a lower profile on the wrist. They don't have that really tall presence that you see on a lot of the other bigger G-Shocks like the Mudman and the Rangemaster and all that. They have this lower profile, which I think just makes it more wearable, especially for people with smaller wrists. So just the 
the appeal that way I think really drives a lot of the sales. And the sales for this watch are about three million a year. If I have my stats right, three million a year. And the uh, F the F ninety one W was between three to four million a year. So when you're looking at these two watches, you're seeing something that this watch as a G Shock has a very very large following, all, very close to the F ninety one W. So yeah. As far as it being the most iconic Casio watch of all time, I think this is probably it because of the sales, because of the, just the wearability of the watch and things like that. So what makes this watch an icon? Well, first of all, it, it came out in 1987, and then it was updated or reissued in 1996 with a few changes. Now, from there, it became more and more famous because it was in the movie Speed in 1994 with Keanu Reeves, and the module at the time was the 3159. Now, that module was updated to the 3495 in 2021 for this particular model right here, the 5610U. So the modules have, have been kind of the, the brains behind this have changed over the years, but the overall shape and style of the watch have not. You have the great quartz accuracy. You have this just international appeal, uh, I think just because of the size of the watch. It's a very versatile watch. It's not a watch that, you know, you have to kind of plan. If, if you wear this watch, you got to be careful about wearing, you know, a heavy winter coat with a tight cuff, that kind of thing, or, or a, a shirt that has a, a tighter cuff on it as well. This is a watch that really slips underneath a lot of cuffs, and I think it can be worn under a lot of different circumstances. It also has all of the basic features. So when you look at this watch, let's go through this one. Now, this is the 5610U. You go through all the basic features. You're going to have the world time. And, of course, you have all the, the cities that are listed up here. Then you also have the alarms. And you have five different alarms that you can set for this watch, which is great. You have the snooze function in there. And then you have, let's see, the stopwatch, the timer. And then you go back to the home screen. So you have all the basic functions in this Casio watch that I think anybody would really want. So that for that reason alone, you have the, the right size, you have the right proportions on here, it's a lower profile on the wrist, you have all the basic functions, a great light. Something that the F91 really struggled with was the light. So for me, that was a that's just a non-fact, that's just a no-go for me. The Casio CA53 doesn't have a light, and even though it doesn't have a light, it has that Casio calculator look to it, so I, th I think it just gets a pass for that. But this really has the combination of all of it. It has the light, it has the functions, it has the size, and of course it has the durability. Now this particular model, the 5600, the 5610U, both have 200 meters of water resistance. You have the 10-year battery on the 5600. On the 5610 or the 5610U, you have tough solar, so you really have a battery that lasts at least more than 10 years. I have a couple of solar battery-powered uh, Casios, and they have gone well past 10 years. So from the maintenance side, there's really very, very little maintenance that you need to worry about with this watch. You also have the impact resistance. On this model, you have the atomic timekeeping. And so you have all these different features that really make it a grab and go. Like you don't have to worry about this watch. And the accuracy is really good. You also have great mod functions. You can modify this watch. There's all kinds of cases that you can put this module into, different straps that you can wear. Um, and just to mention the strap on here, this is actually a really good strap. It's very comfortable. I do like the radius that they have on here, so it fits my wrist really well. You don't get any articulation on this. Oftentimes you don't, not always, but oftentimes you don't with a G-Shock, but you get a nice uh, stainless steel buckle for durability. And you also have what I call the ratcheting keeper system where you have these little, uh, I don't know, teeth in the inside of the strap that kind of match up with the inside of the keeper. So the keeper doesn't slide around and it stays down towards the tag end or this flappy end of the uh, of the strap. So the wearability of this watch is just really, really great. Very comfortable. You have an excellent light. On the 5600, you have the electroluminescent. On the 5610, uh, the 5610U, now this is the updated module, you have the LED, which I think is almost as good. It almost looks like the electroluminescent, the way that it, it just distributes the light evenly across the display. So I really, really like the LED. Now, the knock against the electroluminescent is that over time, it starts to dim. It just not It's not as effective. So for this watch, I think the LED really does a great job. I think the 5610U, in my opinion, is probably the better one to go with. Although some people do like the fact that you have the 10-year battery, you have the flash alert on the 5600. And the flash alert is just when the alarm or the timer goes off, there's a flashing, the light obviously flashes on the display. 
So if you want something like that, I think the 5600 is probably the way to go. Now I've had this watch and I have been wearing it for my lawn maintenance uh, work that I do. And my curiosity in the comments down below is, does anyone out there have a 5600 model, 5610, whatever, that has failed on them that was not associated with some kind of impact or some kind of, you know, not misuse, but just, you know, tough use. And it just, yeah, it, it was supposed to fail. It, you know, it went through a car crusher and it got crushed with a car. Yeah, we all get that. But was there ever an instance where this watch failed on its own that seemed like, you know, it was just kind of the watch itself. It was it was the watch's problem. I'm not aware of anything. I've never heard of anything online. So I'm just curious to put that down in the comments if you've had any issues with the Casio 5600 the Square or the 5610U uh, as far as just overall failures. So this watch, of all three, we have the CA53. We also have the F91W. These are the three icons of Casio. I think these really represent a lot of what Casio has done over the years. Some in innovative uh, you know, combination of just what people want to have on their wrist that might be helpful for them. You have the cheap, durable um, watch that is just worldwide. It's just a sensation. And then you have something that is just tough as nails. So in my estimation, these are the three Casio icons that people talk about about the most. So put in the comments down below what you think of these icons. Do you have one? Do you have all three? Um, if not, I recommend getting all three. I don't really wear the F91. Matter of fact, I, I've worn it for the review and that was it. And I'll probably never wear it again. But I just think it's such a classic icon Casio. I'm going to keep it. And of course, the CA53. This is just a fantastic reminder and just, uh, you know, part of my youth uh, growing up in the, the calculator and math class and all this, the stress around not using calculators in math class. So these are the three. Put it in the comments down below what you think of that. Check out my website, realidealgear.com, for any of these kind of watches that are for sale that I reviewed. Um, I've got some, I think, pretty good deals out there, so check that out. Put in the comments down below what you think of this uh, series, the Icon series. This has been another Real Ideal Gear review. We'll catch you guys next time.